This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Everybody, it's time to get geeky talk tech. It is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here at Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, where techie people in Pittsburgh talk about the tech news and awesome things of the week. I'm a video producer here, podcaster, all kinds of fun stuff with uh, Sorgatron Media and Psychic Media Service. The crew is here. First of all, co- coming to us from Studio C, our first time piping them in over the internet waves is John Tachilla, Gadget Guru of Big Bank International Incorporated, Esquire. Esquire. How's it going today? I think I got all the things, didn't I? I think I think you did get all the things. I think we need to start. I think we need to add one a week, and oh. when we get to the end of the year, it'll be fifty-two things. We know how crazy that got with the slice ads, <laughs> so you know. <laughs> so John Tachilla with us, and also on the couch. We got the crew. First, Katie Dudas joining us. The uh, Scarehouse podcast. Oh, Scarehouse don't thing. start. No, podcast. I can't talk about that. Jerks. Don't, don't check the Scarehouse podcast. <laughs> Till tomorrow. Until tomorrow. Technology is the worst. <laughs> it will be better tomorrow. After you listen to this on the podcast feed, it should be okay. I had to... <laughs> listen, Katie, podcasting gets better. <laughs> That's true. I just sent a message to Scott and I said, listen to the podcast and please let me know if I didn't cut out the section where I just dropped a whole bunch of F-bombs so I would remember to cut it out later. <laughs> so there may just be a section of the podcast. Is that why there's an explicit tag on there? Just in case, yeah. Just in case? <laughs> just, just in case we didn't leave 99% that 99% short's not there. But there's that 1% that's like, <laughs> did I just highlight it and not delete it podcasting is hard it is <laughs> <laughs> also with us right there ron kraus is with us crazy kraus on the twitter joining us once again first time in the new studio setup yes it is very nice i like it a lot the couch is built for me <laughs> <laughs> yes yes we have stretched the couch out so we yes. can actually as of last week we had three people on there Fairly comfortably, right? I don't yeah. know. I'm not the one that test drove it. It so. was very nice. <laughs> I enjoyed it. So, uh, and did I get everybody? And of course, producer Missy off camera and some other stranger. Uh, so <laughs> we actually, serious stranger. And we did actually mic them this week, so they can say hi. Hi. There you go. So she can chime in, uh, let us know what's going on in the chat or anything else that we might be missing. So, like. What is that? What, what are you? What do you do over there? Uh, so, anyways, uh, but speaking of the chat, you can join us live.awesomecast.net every Tuesday. Whatever technology we happen to be using lately, that's been Facebook Live. So please follow us on the Awesome Cast Facebook page. Uh, you, you can turn on the notifications so you'll know exactly when we go live. We go live with this. Sometimes we go live with the. Um, uh, I wish we were doing a behind the scenes um in topsy turvy turvy land uh with uh, our, our interview with the sender that's going to be posting this thursday i love it don't give me that face i i love that it was sideways uh, that, that, made, that was so much fun uh but uh anyways uh go check that out follow us on awesome cast on twitter uh subscribe to us on itunes stitcher spreaker iheart radio and video versions like i said on the facebook page and awesome cast on the youtube why are you smiling this is at a me, whole right? new dynamic what What's the di- what's Having a new dynamic? Having the room. <laughs> what, oh, what, oh, oh, that there's this going on. So, oh, so, yeah. Wait, am, I, am whole, I? Am I? Don't give me that look. Yeah, <laughs> it's a whole, whole new dynamic. When she used to be upstairs, none of that happened. This is great. She yeah. might need a camera. Uh, we we're work- actually we're actually working on it. it, it, it I, they're all stuck over here because I need extension cords. So um, that's why that's why Chilla's uh, got really interesting views of you guys on his end that we don't see here uh, on this. Um, also, hey, big th- uh, shout out to Rivers Edge PGH dot com uh, has been uh, broadcasting us uh, on Thursdays eight a.m. after Funny Money. So if you missed the show, want to check it? Uh, just want to just something different for your Thursday afternoon. Go check that out over at Rivers Edge PGH dot com. Good friends of the show and big. Shout outs to our friends over at patreon.com slash awesome cast. We just reformatted things over there. And uh, a big thanks to our, our, our longtime supporters, uh, Matt Weller, uh, who's also also contributes a good bit, bit to the show, and Michael Fedor at uh, Mike Fedor Show on the Twitter as well. 
Uh, we just switched things up there. It is now monthly that you contribute, but we have uh, some new um, some new levels to that. Maybe you know we'll <laughs> we're going to have an awesome cast gold un un unleashing soon. Uh, we're we're kind of working on what that is. Uh, so which I, I need to talk to you guys about uh, at some time off show too, but, uh, we'll, we'll be working that up and you guys are going to get some extra content there, um, at different levels as well. So just kind of working that around and uh, doing something a little different. So with that, let's get into our awesome things of the week and Chilla, I see, I see you have some hot merchandise on your, I, I, I... <laughs> I don't actually have the hot oh, merchandise, yeah. so let's... Oh, let's I, thought, I thought I was going to catch you. I thought I was going to catch you there. <laughs> yeah, but, but let's be clear about that. I don't need the, the Fed showing up outside my door again. Um, no, Razer, actually, at CES this week, um, they announced uh, two new laptops, one of them being a 12-pound laptop um, that actually packs three 17.3 inch 4k displays Jeez. so so the displays it kind of come out from the back and then it kind of angles in so you actually have like i said three 4k displays to work with i think we were talking about the kind of using your ipad as another display and getting and uh, the the touch bar um last week after the show this gets you more than just that, if you think people are going to hate you at the coffee shop with, with your with your iPad set up, they're definitely going to hate you at the coffee shop with this setup. I also th thought it was interesting if, if you look at the past the, the video and you look at the first picture there, um, the keyboard layout kind of has the trackpad off to the side. Obviously, with a 17-inch um, display, it definitely affords you a lot of, of bottom of the laptop area where the keyboard would normally sit it affords you a lot of extra space so they've actually put the, the trackpad to the right of the keyboard um down there so i thought that was pretty cool um the device definitely isn't underpowered obviously being 12 pounds it's it's packing an, a, an intel core i7 skylake processor um nvidia gpu um i can't imagine this this being this should get anything that you want done, um, especially since it's going to be running the three displays all simultaneously. Um, I just thought it was interesting. It, it kind of takes th that portability to the next level when you look at some people's home setups. Um, I just thought it was a pretty neat device and pretty neat uh, follow through from the company. Um, unfortunately, towards the end of CES, I guess the prototypes got up and walked away. <laughs> um <laughs> So, 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 so there's someone out there with, with one of these devices floating around. Maybe you'll see them in a coffee shop. Um, but, the, but yeah, the device was stolen, stolen during the show. I can't imagine smuggling a three monitor laptop set up <laughs> that weighs 12 pounds off the table with a bunch of people looking, but who knows? Just put on a um, lanyard and walk confidently. But seriously, <laughs> have you heard of a laptop lock? They're like twelve bucks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maybe that's something this laptop's missing. Oh, is the security <laughs> it's, lock? It's the it. one feature they didn't yeah. include was the was the lock for it, right? Because it has three monitors. <laughs> um, but yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, it, well, yeah. You know, who's gonna walk away from it? How heavy is this thing, right? So twelve yeah. pounds. Twelve pounds, exactly. <laughs> I guess it's not like walking away with like a 40 inch television, I guess, in the long run. Well, like but you know what, though? A lot of 40 inch TVs now are probably 12 pounds. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So still a little you can't just hide it under your shirt like like an iPad or something like that, I guess. So but uh, certainly, certainly. Uh, so there you go. Uh, he has a solo merchandise for his awesome thing. Uh, Katie. Yes. <laughs> I'm just going to start sneaking things in. I see that you have an awesome thing. <laughs> oh, no. Well, you know, of all the things happening at CES, we know the most important thing and the most innovative thing in technology that constantly pushes us further is porn. So at CES this Do I year, want to click on this link? Yes. That's okay. It's on the monitor for you. Yes. Everybody look at my it's porn. It's ready to go. No, don't autoplay. <laughs> don't autoplay CNET. Don't do that. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. So, you know, I'm a big fan of porn for the fact that it just pushes technology further and further. And now we're getting not only VR porn, we have augmented reality porn oh, and geez. vibrating things. <laughs> oh, jeez. So... Your significant significant other not into a threesome? We can fix that. <laughs> we'll find you one. We'll find you a third. Technology oh, will do that for like you. Like a virtual third or? I, I'm imagining that's the next step. I mean, technically, you'd be like, hey, if you don't want to find a third person, we could just make them a fake one and it vibrates. Oh, jeez. So, yes. Yeah, so now, yes, we're pushing technology further again. Uh, they said don't expect 360 video, though. Aww. But 180 <laughs> degrees mean lower production costs, so we could have more people do it. <laughs> well, there you go. But yes, that was a big thing at CES. That's awesome. That's... <laughs> I love the idea of augmented porn. It's just, it's so fantastic. Because it's just like, you just can, you're just, just all these different elements you can bring in now. I can't wait to see what, like, the stories are after this is, like, mainstream. <laughs> and available to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> that's great want to have sex with your favorite superhero it can happen oh no oh yeah oh Three wow threesomes think about it yeah you missy batman wait so would he still be batman if he doesn't have the mask on Ooh. or would he then be bruce wayne Ooh. Ooh. see now we're getting into weird that character Oh! oh. <laughs> These are the hard wow. hitting tech questions. Of the that's day. and that's why you listen to awesome cats. Jeez. <laughs> oh, uh, Prowse? <laughs> Follow that one up. Follow that one up, buddy. My awesome thing of the week was I took my first Uber ride here, in fact. Ooh. Yes. From my lovely home in Stowe Township, I did AKA not drive him here. Rocks. I did not drive. Yeah, I was, was going to say, I was. I, I, that, that should be the thing. Sorg goes and picks up picks up each each host every week. <laughs> yeah, but um, that could be its own podcast, right? No, I had downloaded the app. Um, you guys, if you follow me, you know I was in New York recently in December with my wife. Uh, we went on a little trip. So while I was there, I thought I'd have an opportunity to maybe need to hail. An Uber, so I downloaded the app ahead for that, but I never got the opportunity because it was just too easy to walk outside and go and yell "Hey, taxi!" and yeah. there they were, you know. So I decided, okay, I'm coming in studio today, so let's take an Uber. And I have to say, other than the fact that the guy missed a turn, which I then noticed cost me two dollars more, but what? Yeah, because it was twelve something. It was rated twelve something. To get here, mm-hmm. but now that I looked, I paid fourteen. That, something. that that could honestly happen anyways. Okay. If it wasn't that big of a turn, they missed, you know. Yeah, but uh, the, trust me, it happens. Like, okay, g- give me your thing. <laughs> let, let me uh, get to the rest of but your so thing, like and I'll, said, I'll explain so it. So I downloaded the app, you know, put you know, texted you or DM'd you. Mm-hmm. Hey, what's the address? <laughs> I got the address. You got the DM. Like, I'm in an Uber. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So the Uber picked me up. I, you know, I I clicked the button. It was probably five minutes to six. I think it said fifteen minutes. It would be there. We were here by six thirty ish, somewhere in there six thirty five, six forty. So it worked out great. I have absolutely no complaints. The gentleman that picked me up was friendly, talkative. You know me. I love to talk. Um. So yeah. I who needs a cab. <laughs> So, you know, it was a little more expensive. Like, you know, if, if after the show I decide to walk the what block and a half, would you say it is, to the T line? Mm-hmm. So I could jump on the T, take that into town, then wait for a bus and get home. Granted, it might take me an hour and a half, or I could take another Uber, you know? So it would be probably half the price or even probably a little less than half. Yeah. But I guess you just have to weigh the options, you know? So for my first experience, I enjoyed it. And I was very impressed with their app. I could literally see the car coming to my house. Oh, neat. It's fun to watch, like, yeah. in advance, right? Like, like when there's, especially if you're downtown or something, you see just a bunch of them and, like, little ants kind of going around. Yeah, and literally, like, I could see that, like, on the app, I'm looking at my phone. It said it was a minute away. 
And I saw, oh, he's making the turn, and I look up, and there's the car <laughs> turning down my street. It was mm-hmm. like, so it's very accurate. Also helpful because certain things happen when you're when you're an Uber. Uh, as an Uber driver. Okay. One, it likes to put you in the alleyway or the street behind the house. And it did that to it him. It did that to him. Yeah. Like like getting here like or, or to your place. To my, to my place. Happens all the time, it. apparently, he for was some in, reason. He said he was we, in the we alley. Actually, we've, had, we've had a couple of Uber drivers call and say, I'm in an alley. Yeah. And we're like, yeah, we, we, we saw you drive down there. We're, that's the back of the house. Which is exactly what happened with me, one of the early ones. And it happens... From time to time, like I think, and it also sometimes it's like an address or an address mm-hmm. range, and it doesn't fit where they're at. It's based on location, or you know, they're. It so hold on a second. Sorry, is it also trying to take into consideration that if you're on a road that you don't want to be blocking traffic, so they'll take you a less traveled path? No, no, can't be, can't be, oh, okay. <laughs> can't be. Um, there's one where they wanted me, and I've picked up. Uh, I've at least dropped off several people at one of the um one of the hotels over by I think they're on Bigelow. And, uh, and and it put me on a weird back road up on the hill be- back and behind the place instead of in- to the to the hotel. Because I think when they hit the thing, it took his GPS of where he was in the building, which was closer to that road, which has no access. Vertically, there's no access to this building. <laughs> oh, right? There's like, I got to jump off a cliff to get this guy. Right? <laughs> um, and, uh, and, 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 you know, that, that sort of weird thing. The other thing that happens, like the missed turns and mm-hmm. everything like that. You know how Pittsburgh streets are. Mm-hmm. I figured out because I Waze is always super slow. It takes forever for, to figure out which way I'm going and, and everything like that versus what I'm normally used to. Okay. Um, I think because I'm running Uber and Waze and whatever else might be using it, I think it's taxing the GPS so it's not um, entirely. So it's like there's several times where I've taken a turn and there's like maybe an immediate or there's something where like the context is all screwed up. And I can't like, oh, this is this road, and 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 I've missed that 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 one turn off at Shenley Park. I don't know how many times. So I'd be like, well, we're going a long way around the park. Sorry about that, you know, kind mm-hmm. of thing. Um, and it's just it's it's part of interpreting the roads. It's part of that is slower. I, I have and I have a, a iPhone success, so yeah. it's, it's it's not like I have a slash of a of a phone trying to use this thing, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, and and it's, and it's definitely kind of a problem. And and then sometimes I just get tired and it's towards the end of the shift, and I miss turns. So that, that's, that's another thing too. <laughs> so, <laughs> what happens to the best of us? Yeah. Oh, of mm-hmm. course. Yeah. After like uh, three missed turns, I'm just like, oh, going home. Yeah. The guy must have apologized like twelve thousand times, and I was like, seriously, it's <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, you did it, the five stars. I gave. Five. Good. Good. Aww. Good. Good. Well, <laughs> you know, he doesn't want. You don't want to. Uh, as a driver, you don't want people to think I'm taking you the long way so I can get that extra two bucks or whatever. Yeah. They honestly don't even know what that translates um personally so so i don't that's my take on it so 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 you could you'll do it again yeah I, I, yeah i'll probably do Are it gonna, when i leave here <laughs> you should try lift on the way out okay that's, that's exactly what i was gonna say i'll try lift on the way out. <laughs> a little bit of a a b test huh? yeah uh, there we go there you go let's see if see if, see if one was cheaper than the other one uh, although one may be anyways, depending on traffic as well. So, okay. but uh, I usually don't see surge pricing in this area. So I think you'll be okay. Usually Dormont with all the bars from what I've seen. Really? Um, mm. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'll get, I'll get notifications says, Hey, it's a uh, 2.5 right now in Dormont, like in the middle of the day. Like uh, sometimes, yeah, you'll see, a, I'll see a surge swath across um, like, like Bethel park through um, uh, what's like, uh, Begins with a B, has a giant eagle and stuff. Right? Like down fifty one and everything Brentwood? like that. Brentwood, yeah, yeah, like like just through there, like a lot of those. And it's not places I'm going to hang out, yeah, uh, typically. But there you go. Um, also nice, they just added Lyft has had this as a driver. They've added destinations. So like when I'm all the way on the other side of the city, want to come home, but would would like to pick up a couple rides on the way. <sighs> That's really nice because, like, oh, somebody's going this way. You picked something up, so it's not just a drive across town without making any money, right? Um, or when I get stuck in like Greensburg for taking somebody out there, <laughs> and then it's like, and I leave it on on the way back, and it wants me to go twenty minutes up the turnpike, and I'm like, nah, we're not doing that. Um, so, so there's an interesting story that came up. I, I see this noted. Andy and uh, Facebook also shared this. I believe so. Yes. Okay. Um, Wendy's just trolled someone so hard he deleted his Twitter account. Well, I need to find a thing. There it is. So Wendy's is is in business for itself, it seems. Uh, so, 
Um, so Wendy's put out a tweet that says, our beef is way too cold to ever be frozen. Yeah, this is a different article than I was, I was even reading. Uh, and, he, <laughs> and somebody said, oh, you know, hey, um, uh, what was the sequence? Um, so you deliver it raw on a hot truck. Uh, where do you store cool things that aren't freezing? Uh, y'all should give up. McDonald's got you beat with the dope ass breakfast. <laughs> followed by, followed by. Sorry to hear that. Uh, uh, or something about. Uh, yeah, wait. Here it is. Here it is. You don't. You don't have to bring them. Uh, you don't have to bring them into it because you you forgot refrigerators existed for a second there. Uh, so and the person deleted their account. Yes. So uh, and, and actually has. Been, you... Well, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, Wendy's, and I noticed in this article, um, Wendy's has been doing this for some time uh, of roasting a lot of, of the people making mention of their account. And, and this this article does go into people actually asking for whoever is writing for the Wendy's Twitter to roast them. And, and it's kind of funny. They're pretty much just like, yeah, find find someone else to roast you. But uh, it, it's pretty impressive, and it, it it definitely has people looking and and constantly visiting their Twitter to see who they're roasting next. Certainly, and it, it, you know stuff like you know, hey, uh, I bet you won't follow me. Yeah, you just won that bet. Um, <laughs> the telling people to delete their account. Uh, oh, they there's awesome. one that came up over on Wrestling Mayhem Show where they've gotten into it with uh, pro wrestler Matt Hardy. Uh, be, who is doing a very interesting character over on Impact Wrestling, which, uh, you know, isn't quite as popular these days, but uh, kind of taking the internet by storm a little bit. It's kind of becoming its own wrestling meme sort of thing mm-hmm. uh, that they're doing on television. Um, but uh, to the point where, where they, they talked about doing a uh, broken Wendy's and uh, Impact Wrestling themselves is now interacting with Wendy's, which is just a weird, bizarro world to me. Uh, so, and I've seen, we've seen this before a little bit, like, like Dinoff... Not uh, the 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 what's the piece I like? The starts the day. DiGiorno's. 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 No, the, <laughs> I think you're the, saying slice. Wait, what's what's the frozen pizza I like? Let me, <laughs> I let me clarify. Say, flying on the plane. <laughs> flying on the plane. I will get the whoops. Um, <laughs> but, they, post but they were very like on Monday Night Raw, much like we do with the wrestling accounts. Like they're very interactive with what's going on with wrestling and. And everything, and then they stopped. It's like that person isn't working for their social media team anymore, you know. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I thought that was an interesting uh, uh, way they were going at this. Uh, Katie, have you been following the story? I think it's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> like, cause there is always that point when you're in social media where you want to just say these things, mm-hmm. and then it's like, ah. I, I mean, it's it's a big difference when you're tweeting as a local company. And when you're tweeting as a big corporation, big faceless corporation I can, on, I could get away with being a jerk a little bit more in the the big world as opposed to like the small business world. But there are times where you just want to say things and go, oh, just please just let me say some things. And you try to behave. <laughs> it, it's, it's hard sometimes. I, I want a separate account for like me just to say this is the things I wish I could have said. Like, well, like you could have a separate one where like it's the characters. Yeah, you know, like I <laughs> this mean, is Princess Holly responding to you because <laughs> the real scared account wants to say something much worse. Hey, get off our backs! <laughs> like, you know? what, did you even just read what you tweeted or what you posted? Sometimes that happens a lot. I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> can you yeah. clarify and use English? Yeah, can I unsubscribe to your Facebook page? I'm like, I don't what. I tried through Hulu. That was my favorite last one. <laughs> I tried through Hulu to unsubscribe. Why won't you let me unsubscribe? I'm like. I don't think you're talking to the right account. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so yes, the Hulu's is pushing the scare houses. <laughs> and apparently have similar auto completing. Um, right. It was weird. Like email addresses. To Hulu? I, 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 well, no, I, apparently there's some sort of show that they've been trying to, I, I don't know. Like uh, the, from what I was gathering, it was something that they were watching that was similar to us. And they thought we were putting up the, <laughs> I, I'm not sure. Like they were offended by the content or something? Uh, yeah, they're like, I tried to unsubscribe from you. I'm like, that's not me. <laughs> Sorry, I have nothing on the Hulu's. I'm not here to tech support you because we are a haunted house. <laughs> but <laughs> no, just <you> saying. <laughs> there's, wow. off, there's times where I've wanted to just be like, you realize we are not a haunted house, not a parenting service, like a parenting website. That's the one I a lot of times. Wait, wait, what did you? I, I've There's been things that we have posted that has taken, has given us a like not a little bit of heat on the page in in 
like why would you actually do this this is horrible to do to a child <laughs> and i just wanted to respond that we were a haunted house not a a child care website <laughs> like i don't know so yes so that'll leave it all to the imagination <laughs> hold on uh yeah missy so what you're saying is feeding your children to krampus is a bad thing it wasn't even that <laughs> I was I did I was hesitant to post that after the the thing I oh, it was that stupid um oh wrapping the fake presents and throwing them in the fire. Oh. I was shocked how many people responded to us on there. That's horrible. You're going to psychologically damage these children. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not really suggesting this. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was quite I mean there were several responses. So I was just like I just I I'm going to walk away now. And then you also the other thing for me is I never want to really get snarky with people cuz I don't want other people who are fans of our page to jump on those people too. Yeah. Like I would never want to invite that on them. Right. You don't want to you don't want to sick the the, the no. faithful Millions. on them. No. Yeah. It's yeah. you don't want to do that. That's that's not a nice environment for anyone. So yeah. No. But if I was Wendy's a faceless corporation, <laughs> I'd be saying all kinds of things on well, the middle finger. Well, Wendy's. after Scarehouse franchises yes. uh, in the future yes. <laughs> apparently. I'll be running the Facebook and Twitter with middle fingers in the air. <laughs> there you go. No, you just you just hire the intern and say, Yeah, go for it. Yeah, whatever. You just like the like they just just get the most asshole uh uh intern ever. And she's like, have fun. Have fun. All right, guys. Well, you know what my favorite non-frozen pizza is? <laughs> Never frozen. I'm sure they know what refrigerators are. And <laughs> they are Slice on Broadway, our good friends down the street here in Beachview, PA. Uh, Beachview, part of Pittsburgh, PA. And we, we've been doing a fun thing on our social media lately. Uh, Katie, Katie has been, or uh, Missy is evan looking at uh uh recorded our facebook live to our uh pizza pickup this afternoon so if you want to see check out the guys say hi to the guys and uh and then you know exactly who delivers the sweetness um but uh <laughs> is there some some shuffling happening over there yes there is uh as katie has Welcome, uh, well yeah there you go <laughs> Uh, thank you, uh, Slice She's on Broadway. The worst to get that slice. <laughs> Supporting <laughs> Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Check out the locations here in Beachview, as well as over on um, on Main Street North in Shore. Beach or in Carnegie and in PNC Park, the home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. PJ's underscore Slice on the Twitter. Let them know the awesome cast sent you. All right, um, I did. Did somebody did somebody claim this yet? Yes. It's no, been okay. Okay, uh, we have an awesome tip from Chilla, Ooh. or app, Ch tip or app. I forget which where, where, which app. one it was. <laughs> it's the it, it's an app. It so, an app. so 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 I and I noticed this this morning. Um, obviously, the there's there's a lot of news articles going around about the anniversary, the the first iPhone announcement, um, and there was an article I read this morning that a bunch of companies switched their their apps to be free temporarily. Um, in light of of the anniversary of the announcement, one of them is Continual. Um, it's a post long videos app. It's normally I, I, it actually caught my eye because it's normally eight dollars, but it's it's free for a period of time. Um, I was surprised to see, and I, I did grab it quick, but I didn't get to to, to play around with it very much. Um, a lot of times when these apps go free, then you see that if you actually want to use them after downloading them, you have to, it's kind of like a pay as you go thing. They didn't do that with this app. So I'm guessing it is going to be free for a short period of time. And then it's going to revert back to its, it's uh, $7 and 99 cent um, price. But I, I thought it was pretty interesting because what it does is it allows you to take any of the videos that you have on your phone and it will actually trim them into 10 second video clips so then you can post them in chronological order um to to uh instagram uh, for your for your story so I, I thought it was an interesting way to kind of get around the the 10 second um limit of a, of a typical a typical post um so, so i thought it was pretty cool obviously a lot of businesses are probably going to use this but I, I thought it was an interesting way to kind of get around and stick it to the man Currently still free on the App Store as of this recording. Yep. So there you go. That's good. So this will be the perfect thing for me to post my entire movie trailers 
uh instead of so wait how does it post it to like instagram and stuff you you actually do have to so what it does is it takes and, and trims it into 10 second clips oh. you then have to go in and post them the actual 10 second clipped versions you could take this whole show <gasps> clip it into 10 second clips and then post it to instagram does that have to be 10 seconds can, can it be 12 like 30 or 60 or something well what they were saying was the instagram stories that when you when you do a video post it has to be 10 seconds or less for instagram that's what that's what it was saying in the in the in the article and on their app you can do much longer now it's like 60 seconds now maybe maybe they haven't updated this in a while perhaps it was updated all right i have chosen uh january 5th january 5th that's interesting that's Post order videos. Post videos older than twenty four hours. Upload easily in correct order. That's interesting. I'm, I'm early. I'm I'm actually uploading the. I'm uploading the trailer that we just did for IWC's Winner Takes All. And exporting clip six, seven. Oh, this will be fun. Maybe I'll go back to that later. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go back to that. Yeah, it's it's. It's up to clip 14. Um, this is probably about a four minute video. Clip 17. Holy crap. <laughs> so, so you're going to get, is that 20, 240 clips? 24 clips. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm not up for mathing it right now. Uh, <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, all right. We'll see. We'll see what that does. But yeah, that's free right now. If you want to check it out, it's called Continual on the iTunes App Store. Is there an uh, Android version? That do we know? I did not see an Android version okay. out there. All right. So there you go for the iPhoneers. All right. Let's get into the stories. If I remember which way my mouse goes here, because this is an older Mac that I never, there's some crunching going on. I'm sorry. You're loving the crunching. <laughs> there you go. It's continuing that slice on Broadway ad. Sorry. <laughs> right. It's so good. Uh, Chilla, what's going on with uh, Google Voice? Um, nobody knows. No. Uh, so I, I kind of I, use it. I was. I hope somebody <laughs> figures it out. <laughs> well, so so I guess uh, over the last couple of days, there's been a banner popping up on the Google Voice uh, website, uh, kind of saying, "Come experience the new Google Voice." Mm-hmm. Um, and it's been it's been appearing, disappearing. People that have clicked on it, it, it claims that you're going to get to. You can try it now. Um, the new interface, which usually we see what Google does when they do this, you can try it for a period of time and then it's kind of forced on to everyone. Um, the the try now link that, that had been popping up actually just refreshed and took you to the typical Google voice page. Okay. Um, nobody knows what is happening. Google did make a formal actually response comment to uh, some of the, the news um, channels that had actually asked them for comment on this, and they just said good things are coming, um, but they wouldn't really give any additional information as to what's coming. So I'm guessing in the in the coming weeks, and I'm, potentially after Mobile World Congress, I'm guessing we're probably going to hear about changes to Google Voice. If you remember, Google Voice really hasn't been updated since 2015, so it's Jeez. it's getting a little. It's getting a little old. Uh, it, there's been some minor, minor app updates, but it was more bug fixes and stuff like that. Um, so I, I, I'm thinking we're going to see something come out of Google around the voice, the, their, their voice platform, but it's TBD as to what's actually coming. I, my, 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 my question is, is it going to happen on a Tuesday night interrupt hangouts and just make you mad <laughs> <laughs> or, or or it's also my business number too so that's yeah that's an issue uh too so yeah I, I, well, yeah that's true they do they do pretty much integrate it into google hangouts now so which they've been walking away from that as well so i, I with the, the allo and everything which i'm not sure is catching on yeah i mean i don't really kraus has has an account on on allo and and i mean I I, know, I rarely go in there. Yep, I'm exactly I just don't see that. a lot of people messaging me from there. Mm-hmm. That's that's, a, that's a, it, it. Looked like a good platform, but again, just that delivery seems a little bit weird. Um, well, it's one of those things. You, I don't think. I don't think you could set it as the default. Right. That's you can't set it as your default text messenger right now, like you could with Hangout. 
So, so it kind of has to remain its own separate texting platform. Mm -hmm. hmm. Right. So if you could just start texting people, even the ones that weren't an Allo user, then maybe you'd use it a little more often. But if you're not on there, then... Then I have to drop back to my normal text messaging right. app. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. It's kind of the same problem we have with our, our Messenger plus Hangout plus iMessage, say, if you're on that platform. so Yeah, but I iMessage, at least if I send you, if I go into messages and I send you a text message and you're an Android user, you get it as a text message. He said this you don't me. this you don't get it. I said, is, oh, are you the green I'm bubbles? An, I'm an Android user. You're the green bubbles. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Although I was really happy that the stickers from like the iMessage seem to work on texting. Like I can send those over text, like text images, like MMS. So mm -hmm. I'm not, yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with that. So, um, this is one that Missy brought up, uh, and it's got to be fun not to get political on this show. Although we really kind of experimented with that last week on the Wrestling Mayhem show, but you got to love this. So this is an article from over on the Verge, and just I, I don't have this uh, kind of hooked up to 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 kind of play back. Mark Hamill has begun dubbing Donald Trump's tweets as the Joker. If you could play it, yeah. <laughs> I'll it see. is Let so me see if I can pull it up over it. here. Okay. All right. I well, heard cool. it on another show this morning and it is amazing. I heard something. Yeah, I did too. I don't know. I, I think something's pushing some audio over somewhere along here. It's like in one ear. I don't know where it is. Um, okay. Uh, so that's somewhere. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mysterious Mark Hamill. Also, when Mark Hamill as the Joker starts talking in your head without knowing where it came from, that gets a little creepy too. Houston, we have a problem. We have a little bit of insanity. Uh, so I actually can't open it up over here. So, uh, but no, definitely go check that out. Um, Go Mark Hamill. Uh, we had one from Brandon in the chat. Or not in the chat, in the Facebook group uh, for, uh, uh, again, some more LG awesomeness. Um, they got they got LG's new TV is less than three millimeters thick. And that's why that's a story I kept hearing uh, from CES was, no, TVs are actually like the between the UHD actually rolling out and some really interesting things being done with, with uh, monitors, like different form factors. Uh, like this, you know, things like that, um, obviously, or adding multiple screens to a stolen laptop. Uh, but uh, <laughs> there's definitely a lot going on there that that seemed like it was pretty, uh, uh, pretty cool. Um, uh, Chilla, have you, have you uh, or, or, or Kraus, have you uh, uh, seen a lot of the monitor technology that's been coming out to CES? OLED, I, I, I know, is very popular right now. Mm -hmm. Very, you know, that's a very popular direction Go you know ahead. i'm guessing it's it's probably due to the production and the the oleds they're the the price to produce is coming down so it'll be more attainable and easier for a lot of the companies to to kind of play around with the one thing that i thought was interesting at, at the, a lot of the thinness commentary and, and and i think it holds true to this um lg device too is you have you are forced to wall mount it hmm it can't it can't go on a stand like your like your typical TV would so it does it does have to be wall mounted but if you if you even if you look at the picture it's pretty cool if you you could put it on a glass slab and it looks like it's just floating there because there is no <laughs> real thickness to it that's awesome <laughs> it's held on by magnets <laughs> think about that wow and not even like probably super strong magnets either, right? Just yeah, magnets. just magnets. So I mean, this is kind of the world. Like I, I remember iPads. Like the the you know looking at it, that's why I keep my iPad ones and old models around because like I can just throw Netflix on there and there's a monitor, right? And mm -hmm. I can it's, it's so small form factor and I can just stick it on a fridge or put it here, you know, uh, uh, kind of thing. Um, but like seeing seeing just full on full quality televisions like this that that could be really interesting. 
Um, I'm sure it'll be implemented in very interesting ways in like four star hotels in the next several years, right? Yeah. And they'll still just feed a standard definition video to it because that's how they work. So, <laughs> which drives me nuts. Um, <laughs> but, anyways, <laughs> I hate that. You're like in a, like, I'm in the Hyatt Regency and I can't get an, S- or an HD feed of the playoff game for the Penguins. Are you kidding me? <laughs> but, I don't know. Katie, how are you wasting your time lately? <laughs> or in the near future currently podcasting no <laughs> <laughs> currently well currently. here is that oh yes uh, well i'm wasting my time because i am a horrible horrible procrastinator is this what you're talking about yes because i am i am a terrible procrastinator. so i just kind of came upon this app it's uh, it's time uh but if you search for it it's time where to go beat procrastination with ai it's 99 cents i just found this and i can't wait to download it um, but apparently my credit card <laughs> is expired on my phone. I hate technology. <laughs> this is horrible. But what it's supposed to do is um, it gives you some suggestions. You put in your task. You start with your task for the day. And you're like, hey, I need to get X, Y, and Z done. And it helps you keep track of how much time you're using on these tasks. Mm. And it kind of reminds you to stay on course. Like maybe you said it's going to take me. I'm going to stay. I'm going to do check my emails for an hour. And then that's it. And then suddenly it's over an hour. It's going to start counting back up. It's nice because it doesn't really yell at you. It's just kind of like, hey, you're going over the time you planned on doing this. So, um, but then it also, I guess in the future, it'll start making suggestions for you Mm -hmm. about how much time you're actually using for these things. Like when I go, oh, it should only take me X amount of time to edit a podcast and post it. And then it's like, nope, you need way more time than that. But yeah, it looks pretty cool. So you start putting together... putting aside the right time and stuff right yeah. so and it's it was um actually created by two teenagers a 17 year old and a 15 year old <laughs> and i'm like why <laughs> i wish i had good ideas <laughs> but yes. so i say it's 99 cents on the app store yes yeah, so it doesn't look uh, like it's anywhere else on android yet but mm-hmm. it's it, like i said it's, it's a newer thing but it'll, it'll help you I hope. We're going to find out. I'll come back next week. I'll download it. I'll let you know how much time I waste. So you don't feel so bad. Apparently, I have to verify my, my payment source as well. So I'm I, stuck, too. I thought it was okay. So I don't know. Maybe it's everybody. Yeah. No, no. I Well, there's a new device I'm buying this on. So oh, whatever. There's that, too. <laughs> so, yeah. Look at that. What would be interesting is after the first week, seeing how much time you potentially wasted, but then it's supposed to learn. So it'd be interesting to see if you could actually be more accurate. Mm-hmm as far as not overextending yourself for meetings or something along those lines when it, when you're actually trying to trying to to be productive but and and not i don't know i'm constantly running late to meetings cuz i mm-hmm. think oh this is only going to take me 15 minutes and it takes a half an hour and then the the whole rest of the day is thrown off in 15 minute clips or i'm trying to sh- cut a meeting short to 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 get back that 15 minutes to put the rest of my day on schedule absolutely absolutely yeah because i i am i do a bad habit of that i'm like oh i only need to check email for x amount of time and it ends up being way more and then if it's telling me i have to stay on track then i can't watch all my cat videos so but yes i will try it for you and see what happens awesome uh missy you were really excited about this uh 3d imaging uh for the body thing can you tell me a little bit about it oh uh yeah the 3d4 medical they do medical apps. And the coolest thing about this is that they're integrating 3D technology. And I was tr- I saw it as a video on Facebook and it didn't integrate out well to show you. But um, what it is, is it takes essentially medical, you, you can look at the, the human body, Sorg has some images up here. You can look at the human body in a 3D format and like it expounds out upon like you, you can slice out the skull and you, you can take it slice by slice like an MRI or you can actually have the skull kind of splatter out so you can see the different bones that make up the human skull. And it helps with medical studies. So medical students get to use this when, when they're learning about the human body and it breaks everything down from, you know, the different parts of the skin down to organs down to bones and it's, it's just kind of cool because it does it in a 3D environment, which I thought was really, really awesome. Well, there you go. It's called um, 3D, 3D Medical. Well, that's just the... Yeah, yeah 3D, 3D Medical Imaging. Um, the, it's 3D4 Medical. 
yeah. complete anatomy is is the the actual uh, app and of course program. of course there's a really cool um html5 website thing going on here where the the skull splits out on the on the site um this computer is too slow to the it's listen, awesome. listen I, I picked it up. Listen, I've, I, I moved the things because it was always we had the old browser, we had the slower computer. I threw it on another one that's a little more updated, still can't handle it. So we're going to have to upgrade that again so we can look at all these cool websites. So, ah, the skull just like flipped out in front of me with the eye sticking out when I went back to the video <laughs> and it scared the crap out of me. So, all right. Um, uh, from there, hey Chilla, you want to uh, pick up one of your other stories here uh, w- w- that you want to talk about before we get out of here? Um, let's do. So Fitbit acquires another company. Oh man, um, are they shutting them down too and leaving me somebody with a Kickstarter that they can't upgrade? They, they bought um, I'm just... Vector and and Vector and Pebble share a lot of sim- similarities. Um, they did have a <laughs> not only not only just being bought by Fitbit. Um, I did not see um, if they were going to be discontinuing the vector devices. I'm sure they will over time. At the same point in time, they also announced that they will be launching their own app store, hmm. which was very reminiscent of Pebble Yeah. <laughs> um, today. But I, I just think it's interesting. Is Are we going to see kind of you're going to have your Android Wear, your Apple Watch, and then Fitbit is going to kind of dominate the remainder or, or maybe even the majority of the market. Um, so, so it'll be, it'll be interesting to see where this plays out. Um, but what also worries me is Fitbit going to get a bad name for just pretty much ruining. If, if you don't have a Fitbit, an Android wear watch or an Apple watch, is it worth buying any competitors because they could just be gobbled up by Fitbit and then you're left with something that you can't necessarily use. You certainly want it. Certainly, kind of makes you want to look to something that's more Android Wear or Apple Watch. Something that's a little has has a more core thing to it, right? Um, it, it would make me very suspicious of using uh, like a Fitbit has the Fitbit, you know, Pebble ish watch thing, right? That has apps and everything like that. Um, I don't know. I, I I think I still want to go with that kind of core thing. It's like going to the BlackBerry um, of, of smartphones, right? Uh, versus versus something that's a little more standardized, like an Android or a uh, Apple Watch. Although I'm worried about Android Wear because they're not even updating that anytime soon. Yeah, I think it's going to be a while. But but most of the people there there are a number of Android Wear people making Android Wear devices that that are already stating, you know, this device is going to be upgradable to the next the next kind of OS version, mm-hmm. or or it will definitely be getting the next updates. I just worry about some of these these other companies. If if you buy into it, and I'll, and these aren't typically inexpensive devices, they they're, they definitely come at a cost. How, how long is it going to last you? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, well, I had a, a kind of a side awesome event that I got to attend this past weekend. Um, I actually got to go to the uh, IBM Watson AI X Prize final pitches for the hackathon over at Ascender. Uh, that was a Sunday night. Um, really interesting stuff um, there. I got the winners here uh, lined up, but um, um, they, so so it was kind of a heady experience because <laughs> they, they they had three minutes to pitch their final pitches for a project they work on. And it's not that they really kind of produce um, anything tangible like like startup weekends typically do, uh, like website or, 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 you know, kind of a business plan. It's just, it was kind of like, there's this problem. We think we can solve it with AI. We think you can apply this, this, and this. There was like something that was about databasing, which was like, it feels like people are kind of already doing that in certain places. Um, so it was really interesting to kind of look at that sort of thing. We, uh, we did uh, share a lot of it over on the Awesome Cast uh, Twitter account, of course. Um, one was really interesting. It was called, um, well, I'll get the name here in a moment. Uh, but it was, a, a kind of a, a learning application that, uh, seemed to adapt to one of the big problems was, um, XP is what it's called. E-X-P-I-I. Um, when you're in a math class, the teacher has no idea where people got lost in the math problem, right? So it's kind of an online tutoring thing. They've, they've applied it to, to uh, math right now, they're actually um, kind of rolling this out in some developing countries. 
uh, CMU uh, math professor locally is involved with it. Um, another one was uh, Clean Robotics. They actually want to make kind of trash cans that will, uh, through through cameras and, and optics and and, and, every, and detectors in there, um, kind of say, okay, this is recyclable, this isn't, and split that out into the two things. Um, something that you know we'll have to iterate a bit, but right now it's just like you put one thing in at a time, it says recyclable, not, puts in the right bin, moves on, right? Um, behavior was interesting, uh, and I'm trying to pull together what the thought was with that. Um, it was run by, it was run by a guy that has, um, a background in criminal justice uh, as a defense lawyer. And he wants to use AI and there's already plenty of wearables that are worn apparently by, um, people that, uh, you know, drug offenders, alcoholics, um, to monitor what they're doing. And he actually wants to have something that gives you a feedback when things are right for them to relapse. So instead of like, okay, we know you relapse because we obviously there's there's a substance in your bloodstream or this is happening in your body or something like that. Actually, take like like not just your stats, your your vital statistics, but like your environment around you, like heat and you know, and in, 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 in humidity and things like that that may affect you and make your body feel a certain way and kick that up. Um, and so, and, and just kind of, you know, kind of learn from that Marinus analytics. This was really interesting. This was, um, they're, they're very involved with sex trafficking victims and they're looking at very public on these boards, you know, illicit kind of places, advertising, um, sex trafficking, but they're able to look at it and see common ads across multiple cities to, see that it's part of a bigger ring because if wow. you just looked at you think it look at one board you see a posting for an advertisement mm -hmm. it just looks like a one-off another advertisement mm -hmm. but they can look at it and you know say like hey this one is posted on a board in pittsburgh this one is posted at a board in boston do, 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 do. and they can pull that together and start to um they, they talked about the idea of authorship which is something that we've talked about as being, you know, authorship was an idea that you connect and have an identity uh, in Google or on Google Plus, right? But kind of like an idea around that, like we can say, okay, these all belong to the same person because they're the same kind of ads, and this is a bigger thing, and you can track down things a little better. So um, those were the four winners of this, and uh, they got their uh, their their fee and uh, have some support from a sender who we'll be talking to on the awesome chat this week. Uh, I had a great conversation with that. Um, but, uh, they have their fees to the AI X prize, um, taken care of. So they will be continuing on with that. Um, and, and as we discussed in, in the interview, they're, they're, they're looking at the AI X prize Pittsburgh really being kind of the East coast base for this too. Wow. And the X prize is a process that's going to take them through 2020 to get a winner. So everybody basically has the next four years to work on these projects and, and everything to try to get the X prize. Um, and there's some really interesting stuff, really getting really heady stuff, really stuff that's before its time. And, um, yeah, really cool. Also, it was, it was nice to see, um, somebody joined us from, they weren't, they, they think they were in Germany at the time, but they joined us, uh, via a giant Google hangout and I can't believe it worked, <laughs> but they were tied into the AV for, um, for the, the new place. And Ascender's got, you know, they've just got set up with things in the last couple of months. So they got... Uh, very good hookups over there. So uh, go check that out. Um, check out, just look up um, AI X Prize, um, hashtag AI at X Prize on Twitter. Uh, there'll be a lot of information on there. And uh, check out Ascender PGH uh, for the latest that they're doing. They're very involved with this process. And again, look out for that awesome chat this Thursday. So with that, anything else? Anything else? I don't have the doc in front of me. Anything the else AI I'm missing? Drone, the ambulance drone. It's oh, the like ambulance. something out of the future. The video is just incredible. As a as an once EMS, EMS worker myself, I can really appreciate what they're trying to do there. Let me bring that up. Missy, Missy put that in the rundown here. It was one of our ones we did not get to just right away. Um, and there's video to this. So so explain what we're what we're seeing here. So Carl. essentially, it is a one man, one patient. Flying ambulance. It's crazy. It is crazy, and it's it's meant for rural areas that have mm -hmm. limited access to ambulance services. You know, unlike Allegheny County and things like that, but somewhere like up in Greene County or somewhere where you might be 
you know, an hour outside of the city. Yeah. You can throw an EMT or a paramedic in this thing. From what it looks like, the drone itself takes care of the flying and you take care of the patient. Wow. What a tremendous idea this is. And I'm telling you, the video, I don't know if you're showing it or not, but the video of it landing and taking off and opening is incredible. It's awesome. Yes, it's it's just very cool. Um, Kind of off of that a little bit, one of the cool ideas I did hear was um, one of the companies wanted to, I think they were one that was pitching this. It wasn't, they weren't pitching this for the competition, but they were actually, they are going to come into a center with this idea. They want to do something around EMS and a, a lot of kind of delivery, kind of like kind of supply chain kind of yeah. things. But like, again, taking that kind of thing that makes you decide, oh, makes, makes the program decide, okay, this car is the closest to you in Uber. And yeah. it's one of the companies in U- USPS, or I'm sorry, UPS, a lot of a lot of other companies are already looking into and funding stuff like this. But saying, okay, um, an accident happened here. Instead of taking resources that are going to ship a, 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 a shipment of of burritos across town, that's going that those resources will go towards making sure the nearest ambulance get can get to that thing. Like you know, think of it like an Uber for ambulances. It says you know. Th- that that makes that more efficient than just the one that answers the call or the one that works the area that might be on the other side of their area. Uh, and again, I'm not familiar with how EMS calls work or anything like that. But either way, it probably could use some more efficiency uh, uh, around technologies like this and, and kind of looking at that kind of city grid and that kind of thing, which you know everybody's looking at. Everybody's taking shots at this city data kind of situation little by little. We've talked about a lot of here on the show. Uh, be interested for that coming together. And on top of that, Uber just opened up city data. Oh, yeah. I did see that. They were, they were talking what, about. What will be interesting, too, is, is like, I, I know Lights and Dormont, the, the um, EMS and the police and whatnot can can flip the flip yeah. the lights. What will be interesting is, as is, 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 is it goes more widespread through cities, in, in in case of emergency or or if there was the, the for instance a fire obviously there's multiple fire trucks coming and, and and other emergency vehicles wouldn't it be interesting if they could actually alter the lights and start diverting traffic and give all, all those vehicles a clear dedicated path through a section of the city by diverting the lights, by pushing people and in, in, in pushing traffic in a certain direction, um, I think that'd be pretty neat. And I think that is something that that uh, I think is Rapid Flow was the name of it. I uh, wanted to do with those corridors in Pittsburgh. Is that kind of smart, you know, movement of, of of traffic? And I think they would flip over for emergency services as well. So, listen, our cars so are going like to talk to each other. Detours. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. That's just crazy. <laughs> So, all right, Ron Kraus, Crazy Kraus on the Twitter. What's going on with you? Not a whole lot. I go to work every day. I come home, rinse and repeat. You know me. <laughs> he also works at Big Bank International Esquire. That's right. He's around the technology. I just don't over have there. as many titles. No, no. <laughs> uh, Katie, dude, is at K Dutters on the Twitter. Scarehouse podcast, maybe soon. Silly. <laughs> it's still not up on iTunes. The podcast that, it's everywhere else. It's everywhere else, but iTunes. So oh, yeah, iTunes takes a while. I know. It just, yeah, yeah. It's, it's the it'll be there by the morning. Oh uh, yeah, I have questions on our break for you, sir. Oh no. Oh no, it's going down. It's going. That's the only down. reason I come to your podcast is so you can help me. So, so we can have a. Maybe we just leave the stream up as you. Maybe that'll be our goal. Is yeah. like Katie asks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what is this thing, and how does it help does, me podcast? What is this? It'll be our QA kind of thing. So our gold content for last week was her talking to Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Did you guys see this? It, we we didn't. Yeah, it was of tech trouble with Katie. Every, yeah. Every yeah. So, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, and then if, if you're okay with the explicit, I'll drop all the swears for you. It's amazing. That'll be great. Uh, John Chichilla, Gadget Guru, ChillaTech.net, and Chilla on the Twitters. Drop me a line. There you go. And I'm at Sorgatron. Uh, hit me up uh, with it. people have been asking me like giving me uh, asking for podcast tips in my email lately I've been really appreciating that and let me check out your podcast and everything that's that's been a lot of fun uh, so please keep those coming ask me any questions ask Sorgatron on the Twitter 
or apparently after awesome cast here on facebook live you can do that as well uh so go check everything out at awesomecast.net supports patreon.com slash awesomecast subscribe to us wherever fine podcasts or video shows are distributed and uh and uh thank you to our awesome audience you've been our, thank you to our awesome co-hosts you have been our awesome audience have an awesome week This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.